it, uh, this is the the work I was talking to you about. Um, so we are getting all these uh, fifteen terabytes of logs from from this uh, URL, and this URL just have this format right here where you have the year, the month, the date, and the hour. It's it's creating a log uh, every every hour. So using this. Um, what is this? This is a Python script, right? Yeah. Using this Python script, yes, uh, Mohammed just showed you how to create a Python script in Trigus. Using this one, what we are creating is all the potential URLs that we could be that we could be using to gather logs from GitHub. Then we are using this parallel execution instead of um, instead of uh, well splitting all these potential URLs, and then we are going to be calling this uh, Python script GitHub Scrapper that I created and asked Mohammed to add to, to Trigest. And actually it, it this man, this script was a pain to create. It was it was a complete pain to create. I actually modified I modified it so many times that the, the code ended up being so so well so ugly. Um, and the main reason was that um, I tried to be doing everything in Python. So I tried to load everything in Python memory using uh, request libraries to use uh, threads in order to get several logs uh, in parallels to op to optimize this. The main problem was that the logs were some some specific logs were were so big that it will end up killing the triggers machines because they were occupying so much space in in memory in, in memory. And at the end I just discovered that the easiest way to to be um, taking care of this very very big log files in memory was to just use execute curl and jzip underneath and save it into a into a file using this i could just load any kind of uh, i could just download any github log even if it was several uh, gigabytes in memory and just store it in, in in the file so i'm pretty sure there is a way to do this in in python but at the end i just end up tire of Python request library, found out that this work and end up doing this ugly stuff that all this work for us. Yeah, first, first. <laughs> and then what this uh, Python script is doing is just going to be reading this uh, log file and it's going to be getting all the information about users or repositories that appear in the log file. So if we go back to the to do, do okay if we go back to the to the workflow we can see that we are getting all the rated information to users and repositories uh, cutting all of them just to merge everything together no no this is not the one sorry so we are going to be getting all the information about users and repos and we are going to be separating this in two different outputs well, one for the users and one for the repos uh, we we did it this way because then we are going to be having other workflows to get extra information about the users and the repos. And I also left this note here that it's just executing LS because at some point I have some, some troubles and I needed to debug it and I needed to check that the files were actually being created. Um, so I just left this note, this debugging note here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this was ugly, but it actually only took like, um, man, I don't remember, it was like, five, 10 hours to, to download the 15 uh, gigabytes, uh, terabytes, and get all the information related to, to users and repos. I think it was something that that way. Um, actually, you can read the information about this research in this uh, Trigress page. And at some point here, we should be able to find how long it took. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, it took. Okay, so the download and parsing using uh, 15 parallel medium machines uh, consumes only four hours. So we we were able to download and parse only in four hours these uh, 15 terabytes. Um, that was nice, man. That was nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if we will, if we if we will just use uh, your 15, uh, your 500 different parallel machines. Yeah. We could have done this in in 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, this is like the beautiful thing about that. Like once you've structured your workflow correctly, you can just throw more machines at it and it will just go like exponentially faster. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I will have been down to do that. Uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if, the, if the guy uh, maintaining the, 
this web will have love <laughs> us using 500 machines downloading <laughs> everything at the same time but that's mm -hmm. on him he's not an so yeah and then uh moving forward so at this point we have uh we have parsed all the information about users and repos from from the logs i have to say that we definitely reduce the logs from 15 terabytes to only some uh, maybe hundreds of megabytes and this is because github have so many logs that we only got the the little part that we got interested in but we still found uh, millions of different repositories and i thought i think there was also millions of different users um but i don't really remember do we have okay so we have gigabytes okay 45 million users we found in the logs and in the repos we have 220 million repositories so here we have we started have another problem because even if we have gone from terabytes to just a couple of uh, gigabytes divided in two different outputs well we needed to find we need to enhance the information of, of all of these millions of users and, and, and repositories. And that's a problem because we are going to be using the GitHub, um, the GitHub API, but mm -hmm. we can only do it as fast as GitHub allow us. And also we were using these uh, Git tokens. Um, so I requested trickers, I requested Mohamed and Renat to give me a couple of uh, GitHub tokens because myself, I only had like access to three different account tokens. At the end, I think we end up using like seven different tokens. Mm -hmm. It was something like that. I think we, like, I think we tried to like create brand new GitHub accounts, but like GitHub ended up like banning all of them. Yeah. <laughs> like and just allowing access to the API. So we only could use like our legit accounts. That yeah. wasn't that much. Um, I'm looking here. Maybe I write, wrote down. Okay, only five different GitHub API keys. Yeah, so you can imagine that if you want to access data of 45 million users with five different GitHub API keys, it, it's going to take a lot of time. But actually, because GitHub API uh, moved to GraphQL, we could actually access like half a million, um, it was like half a mm -hmm. million entities per per hour or something like this. It was like crazy. It was really, really good per token, yeah. per token. Like it was, mm -hmm. uh, this allowed us to, to do the, well, this allowed us to actually do the, the research. Imagine like in the, the API rest in, instead of half a million was just like, I don't know, like 5,000, 5,000, something like this. It would have been mm -hmm. impossible to do this research with that speed, definitely. So yeah. thank you to GitHub for using GraphQL and allowing to access this Amazon data. Um, and actually what we have been, what we done here is, um, we will be using this get triggers output node that will allow us to access this uh, output right here. So we don't need to do everything in the same workflow. We can just separate stuff in different workflows. This is very useful here because imagine that we have the enhanced usernames workflow here and the enhanced, um, uh, repos also here and after five days of running the latest node just fail if you want to start again you just need to restart from the beginning and and man i hate that i hate that so whenever i can just to separate different workflows i will do it so at least you mm -hmm. just need to run one one part when we manage to run this part like it's okay it's run we just we can just use the the output uh, right here actually right here you know yeah and you know, like if I may add like one other use case to that, like it's usually useful to like separate your workflows and like separate things, separate workflows. Like when you need to run like the parts at like different frequencies, basically. So like, let's say you have like, uh, you want to run your subdomain enumeration stuff like once a day, but you only want to do your port scans like once a week. So like you can separate them. <laughs> And like have your like port, like your subdomain enumeration workflow like going every day, and like the port scanning uh, workflow whenever it runs like at once a week, like it just pulls the latest merged results of all of your other runs and like starts using them. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Or 
Yeah, or, or even I'm thinking now, maybe if you want like to combine both workflows, you have defined it, but you don't want to have both of them in the same place. Maybe you can just create another workflow that calls each of them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, here we have, uh, yeah, 4.6 gigabytes, uh, 8.6 gigabytes, well, several millions. We, and we call these, um, yeah, we got the output from the previous workflow with these nodes. We are going to just being, we just, we are going to cut all. Um, yeah, this is just cutting all. We are going to be separating the millions of uh, users in this case in different batches. Here we are talking about 1 million users per batch, per parallel process that the Python script GitHub and answer is going to be, well, is going to be taken care of. You can take a look to the code also here, GitHub and answer. Basically what this is going to be doing is it's going to be getting from that million users a, a, a smaller batch of them asking GraphQL uh, GitHub API for all the information about the users and just getting the information related to, um, let me check. Okay, we are in, nah, probably we can see this better. I think we can see it better here. I th yeah, so we are getting information about the, well, the username, um, repos where the user has collaborated, um, information about if the user has been deleted, um, if the user is a site admin, uh, if the user is hireable, uh, the email, some company information, and some and the stars that the that the user is is having right now. Um, this is the information that the GitHub analysis is going to be finding among all the uh, phone users. And finally, we are going to be giving all this extra information to the GitHub investigator, which basically is going to be getting some analytics from the C, this CSV that we found. Um, I found interesting that the sign I mean means that is going to be having some kind of privilege uh, privilege permissions over GitHub. So if you find site admin to true and you manage to compromise that user, well, you're doing like, you could compromise GitHub. That's that's something I didn't know before doing this this research. Uh, you yeah. can, you can, uh, did you know it about, about this before? Not really, like, like before he did this, I thought the site admin like property was only for like on-prem installations. Like where you can have like your own private GitHub installation thing, mm -hmm. but like the fact that like you found like I think fifteen, sixteen users with this property like it's really interesting. Yeah. Like I think some of them like don't even have like GitHub listed as like their organization. Yeah, it's exactly. Kind of weird. That 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 was yeah. and 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 some of them is like they have never used the account, so it's like why is this guy a uh, side admin? Uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, another interesting stuff you can find is like the repos collab. Um, if you find like this user has, I don't know, collaborated with thousands of different repos, like you might be sure that the user is actually a bot that is being used by different uh, organizations and repositories. And man, my favorite finding among all of them um, was that for some reason, for some reason, people was storing personal GitHub tokens in the company information or in the, um, yeah, in here, I think it was in the company information. Like, why are you going to be, no, in the company information or in the repo name. It's like, why are you going to be storing your personal GitHub token? Several of them are still working. Like we could have done this announcement uh, faster just because we could have used these leaked tokens from the same research. <laughs> Uh, but unfortunately, I didn't notice until the end when I did all the all the analytics. But yeah, like I, I found like different, uh, like 15, 25 different users just storing GitHub personal tokens in here. I found that to be crazy, but I guess, yeah. I don't know. People just like to start. Like what happened there? Like what scenario <laughs> like led to this like existing? Exactly, man. I, I, I have no clue. Um... <laughs> But yeah, I think this run took about um, just to get information of the, did I say, enhance repos? No, we are interested in this one. So we were checking about 45 million users. Oh, and mm -hmm. I, I didn't write down the, the time it took. Oh, here. 
uh, almost 12 hours. It, it, it amazed me, man, that it took much, much, much less time to just parse the 15 terabytes of data of all the life or of, of GitHub that to get information about all the users that they have in there. Yeah. Um, okay. And then we have the enhanced reports workflow that actually was almost the same of the usernames. The only difference is that here we are just getting the output from the merge reports of this uh, first workflow. Uh, sorry, here. We are getting that information. We are again parsing it, uh, re reducing all the um, all the repositories to batches of one million at a time. And then we are going to be calling GitHub in answer. We are going to be getting this information, the full name, star, force, water, delete, private, archive, disable. And then we are going to be running this over GitHub Investigator with the goal of getting information such as uh, maybe um, we sorted by number of stars, force, and watchers all the repositories of, of GitHub just to find like the most uh, watched one or forked ones. Uh, it's also interesting to find which one were made private, archive, or, or disabled, or, or were deleted. So yeah, the goal here was just to find out like some interesting information about, about repositories. Um, we were talking about 220 million repositories using the same five different uh, GitHub IPA keys. And this took, this took a lot of time, man. I tell you that this took a lot of time. I didn't write this down. Mm. Huh, okay. Well, unfortunately I didn't write this down, but ah, oh, here. 32 hours, man, 32 hours. <laughs> you can see myself like logging every eight hours, like will I have finished? Is, is this workflow already finished? No, 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 32 hours, man. That That's what I told you, like imagine, imagine having all these workflows running in the same one. And then you get after 30 hours of this last workflow that you can need to add the, the, the time for the previous workflows and something fails. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, yeah. I, I'm not running this again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to give up. I'd like, it's, it's not worth it anymore. So yeah, if you're going to be like doing I this. Like, <laughs> sorry. Like, like, I think you like ended up doing something like that. Like you ran it on uh, like a smaller, like part of the data set. Like you added like some head or like tail bash command to like, uh, like filter out everything except the five, the, the first five like rows. I just started. I just started doing that. Um, so, if for example, we got here. Maybe we can go to the past. Mm -hmm. You can see that the first, the first ones, come on, we'll have here. Yeah, here you we go. have a head. Like, yeah. like I know this is going to take hours. So the first thing I always do in these kind of big workflows is. Let's get only a sample of this of, of, of the set of the information and let's find out if this is actually going to work. The problem I, I had is like here you can see that this is working and we are in the first stage. Then I started downloading like maybe here the biggest um, JSON file was about 10 megabytes, but then there were some JSON files with several gigabytes that I couldn't load in memory. So I was like, hey, right. this is this is working at, at the first try. Right? This is going to be great. And then you find out that no, it's not working because you you didn't get a you didn't get a good sample, and you start needing to change a lot of stuff in the in the workflow. So yeah, this is definitely recommended, but this doesn't assure you that everything is going to just work perfectly just because a a, a small sample worked. Um, but yeah, um, here you can take a look to the complete um to the complete research we did in GitHub and actually you can take a look like this is only talking about the workflows uh, that we use uh, just what I have explained you if you are more interested in knowing the, the the analysis of the data I think you can find it here in resource reports in triggers.com here and covering or seeing insights from uh, 15 terabytes of GitHub logs here you will be able to find all the all the analytics 